Welcome in to another episode of Building the Pride. I am your host, Drew, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Mike. Mike, how are you? Uh, just as handsome as ever, Drew, but how about yourself? Uh, I think that if uh, I'm going to describe it as if I was in the movie Bambi, I am Twitter-pated. <laughs> Twitter-pated. Twitter-pated. Excellent. Free agency and roster building, so this is my Christmas. So, so what you're saying is there's news and notes around the NFL to talk about? There are many. Hey, Donkey Kong. we oo we oo Yes. Where would you like to start, Mike? The entire NFL is at, is at our disposal. Uh, well, I guess no, let's rush. talk. Still no pass rush. We got a little bit there. We're going to cover like we're rallying a... We're going to cover yeah, that. We'll... Yeah. Well, um, well, let's talk about some of the big ones. Um uh, things that happened and things that didn't happen. So I'm going to go back to our predictions. This would have been in September. You predicted Kirk Cousins to San Francisco uh, to start Wrong. this year. Wrong. Uh, I don't think anybody saw Brock Purdy playing as well as he did and not looking like what everybody expected him to be as the uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Uh, but instead, uh, Kirk went to where? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, that's going to be a. I mean, that's a perfect spot for him. He's got weapons around him. He's got a good run game with Bijan Robinson. He's got um, a good young a wide receiver and solid tight end. Yeah, um, I think of anything. Uh, if, if Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to TJ Hawkinson is any indication, like Kyle Pitts should go up in value. Um, Drake London, gigantic Y X wide receiver, you know, like, um, you know, Justin Jefferson certainly can fulfill that role. So I don't know. They just signed Darnell Mooney from Chicago to be a slot guy for them. So there's another, uh, you know, I wouldn't call him a weapon, but like another guy that like is going to facilitate Kirk Cousins being good, good O-line, good running game. They have, as you said, B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. And, uh, you know, I think that they're, you know, if they're, if they're sitting there at eight and Romo Dunze and, or Malik neighbors, you know, are on the board and they're just like, yoink, you know, now we've got a really, he did have a thousand yards a couple of years ago. Zay, quite a good memory. That was the year one of, uh, Justin Fields. And everybody was like, why are you playing this guy, throwing this guy? Like he's a one. And it's like, we don't have anybody else. And then they traded for DJ Moore, and then. <laughs> Dar- Darnell Mooney was just like, oh, hey, you're still on the team, huh? That's cute. And then but they <laughs> yeah. they did sign him for 13 a year. I mean, they didn't, it's not chump change. So, um, yeah, but your high enders are going for 25 to 30 ish, right? So, you know, and Pitts and, um, sub Don, that'd be cool. DJ Reader, uh, depending on the guaranteed money, that would still fit inside what they're, they have available. They have 37 available per o- over the cap uh, currently. Uh, DJ Reader is a great player. I mean, I would love to have him on the Detroit Lions. Uh, certainly helping the run defense. Um, yep, excellent guy. And so if you're if he wanted to come here and like if they were going to give him something like, I mean, so what was that? That would be let's just call it 15 a year. They could they could basically say okay all done in free agency we're gonna just rock into 2024 season with 22 million in cap space and then just go worry about the draft let's start our draft process so yeah love that idea Don really 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 good so plus DT is a place that they could use some help shoring up um, you know Bugs is gone they cut him Benito Jones is not on the roster currently um, right now I think it's McNeil, Broderick Martin, Anwuzarike, and Kaminsky, if you want to call him a DT, because that's where he plays most of his snaps. So, yeah, I think that adding a guy like Reader would be really good. Wasn't he in Detroit, too, day one of free agency? Like, he was in the city of Detroit, if not at the facility. Oh, was he? I didn't know that. Interesting. I thought somebody posted a picture of him that's like, hey, here's DJ Reader at a checkers in Detroit. Like, is this a a sign? (laughs) And I was like, I sure as fucking hope so. That'd be sweet. (laughs) Yeah, that, those are the kind of signs I like seeing. Yeah, so, um, yeah. but the the move in free agency that got me, my eyebrows to go up was 
the Giants trading for Brian Burns. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised with the compensation. What, what second and fourth? Second and fifth. Second and fifth uh, to get access to him, and then I think they renewed him for five years, one fifty, right? Thirty million a year. Thirty million a year, and so. The Panthers get a couple of draft picks. They get, I think, the 39th pick in this year's draft and a fifth rounder, either this year or next. And uh, they cleared $28 million off their cap. So <laughs> I know it's not the same uh, general manager group in uh, Carolina that passed up the Rams two ones and a two for Brian Burns. but Like two years ago? That is nuts. I mean, like I would have to, if some, if someone came today and said, we will give you two ones and two, two and a two for Aiden Hutchinson, you're going to have to have a conversation. I mean, like, I know it sounds insane. It's it's, that sounds insane. I mean, we're not sellers, right? Well, we're not sellers, but I mean, like, yeah, Brian Burns was viewed in Carolina as a piece that you build around and now he plays for the giants. So yeah, it's just really, really crazy. And the thing is, that is compensation we could afford. Yeah. Now, why didn't we do it? (laughs) Well, because it's a $30 million cap hit is probably why. So, I mean, if you look at the move, I mean, we're going to talk about the moves that Brad made, but like, um, he still hasn't given out. I think the biggest free agent contract that he's ever given out was to Cam Sutton, which was like 11 or 12. So he's not going to all of a sudden go, well, we'll just bump that up by two and a half times the amount of money to some guy that's never played for the team before. You know, like if it's St. Brown or Penny Sewell or somebody like that, then I can imagine him paying out that much money, but he knows who those guys are. Right. Every snap of their NFL careers. So yeah, difference, right? Yeah. One of the, uh, one of the predictions that we had at the same time as that we predicted uh, Cousins to San Francisco is Kyler Murray going to Atlanta, which obviously is where Cousins ended up. I'm kind of surprised Kyler Murray, Murray didn't move anywhere. And what what's going on with Justin Fields? Is he going to be sticking in Chicago? Did they make it? I, I don't know. What's going on there? It's a big question mark, isn't it? So the teams that I think could make a move for Justin Fields are the teams that are at the top of the draft board. Not Chicago, obviously. They have, <laughs> you know, but like, could he fit in Washington? Sure. Do they would they want Justin Fields more than they might want Jaden Daniels or Drake May? Probably not. You know, what about what about uh New England? You know, and then Dr. Detroit says the Raiders, and like I agree because even though they went out and signed Gardner Minshew and they have Aiden O'Connell, like two backups does not a starter make, you know? Yeah. And when the Patriots only signed Jacoby Brissett for one year, one year, 8 million, there's that straight bridge. Yep. hundred percent. And so like Minnesota, but that's in the division, uh, Denver. I was just going to say Denver. Yeah. Denver is a potential, you know, and like outside of that, I think you're looking at a team that might be like, do you just want to draft or like to get this guy and stash him? You know, like Trey Lance is uh, Dak Prescott's backup now. You know, uh, Mac Jones is now Trevor Lawrence's backup now. You know, in the same class, by the way, really awkward. (laughs) Yeah. So, True. unless someone comes, what about out the Vikings? Of, well, I mean, the Vikings could, but I mean, if I'm the Bears, if they if they give me an offer that says this is worth our time, then maybe. But I would I would be hard pressed to trade within the division, especially if it's a quarterback yeah. or like. The, their their potential quarterback of the future. If it was the Vikings want to trade up to one, you know, or whatever, like, I think that's, well, they might, who knows who they would pick and maybe the rookie doesn't work out, 
Right. But you you know a little bit about Justin Fields. If that's an that he's throwing to Justin Jefferson, he's got a decent offensive line in front of him. You know, it's not it's not a crazy thing to think. Oh, this guy could make it work there, and then we'd have to play him twice a year for the next however long. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, the Jets. I mean, do you uh, stash him behind Favre Aaron, for a year? Not Favre. If, good God. It's the same guy. Aaron Rodgers for a year. If Aaron Rodgers decides he doesn't want to run for president or whatever he said today, then... Did he really cheat? Something like that. <laughs> this guy's an idiot. But, like, if you were, like, we don't know about Aaron, but he also, Aaron did come out and say, like, I'm thinking I can play two to four more years. And if he's going to play two years, then you don't do it because you have Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So, which uh, one of the things that uh, surprised me was um, the Philadelphia Eagles yeah. um, went from. Well, let, let me back up. What surprised me was DeAndre Swift went to the Bears for eight million bucks a year, and the Eagles then responded by signing Saquon Barkley for twelve million bucks a year. And I'm thinking to myself, he's not 50% better. Like, why would you let a guy like Swift go who uh, maybe it's maybe it's a locker room thing, maybe there was a personality conflict, but like there's not a huge difference between Saquon Barkley and DeAndre Swift. Barkley's been hurt just as much as Swift has and and Swift actually outplayed him last year. Why wouldn't you keep the guy that's familiar with your offense for half the well, not half the price, but like $8 million instead of 12. And I just, it boggles my mind. This whole free agency period has just been catnip for running like veteran running backs. And I don't get it. So clearly the NFL is valuing them. Deandre Swift to Chicago, Saquon Barkley to Philadelphia, Tony Pollard to Tennessee. Um, Josh Devin, Jacobs. Yep. Josh Jacobs to green Bay, Aaron, green Bay. Aaron, uh, yeah. what's his name? Aaron Jones. Aaron to Jones. Minnesota. For a million dollars more. Like yeah. A million dollars is a lot of money. But, like, if you're running an NFL team and the difference. It's one 250th of your cap. <laughs> yeah. Like, if the difference between, like, oh, and by the way, that, like, Josh Jacobs contract, I believe, is like one year and like three voids. Is it? It's some crazy weird yeah. structure. Oh, yeah. Zayquil says the Steelers uh, are trading Deontay Johnson to the Panthers. All right, Zayquil, I'm going to go double check. Uh, while you're while you're checking on that, uh, the other one was uh, King King Henry, uh, Derek Henry signed with the Ravens for two years, sixteen million. I really which like I that. thought, wow, that's going to be good for the Ravens. Jameis Winston signing with the Browns. That's funny. Yeah, um, backup. Yeah, back for sure, backup. Um, T Higgins is a, is the other big one. That's uh, he was franchise tagged uh, by the Bengals, and he's like, uh, you know, we tried to work this out, but we're not on the same page. So, can you send me somewhere, please? So he asked for a trade. I'd yeah, be curious to see what they're going to ask for him. Zayqua is correct. So Deontay Johnson. If I was if I was the Panthers, I would still be trying to trade for T Higgins. So. So, um, but yeah, is that is that somebody we could realistically want to try to get? I don't think so. I mean, I, I at this point, at this point, it would be the only time that Brad has made a move like that. And like to be honest, like I don't think that there's room for him in the offense. <laughs> I mean, like so. Here's the way. I mean, we'll probably talk about this a little bit later. But like St. Brown and Laporta were like just less than half of all the targets in the in the offense. Josh Reynolds is that because was, everybody else is kind of crap or mid know. at best. Like well, Josh Reynolds had 70 targets and like 55 catches and like and then Jamo had 55 targets and less catches. But like you know, like so between those four guys it's what 250 370 out of 600. So almost two thirds, and then the rest went to like Khalif Raymond here, yep. Jameer Gibbs running backs there, yep. you know that kind of stuff. Like 
couple other tight ends caught some passes. Remember Marvin Jones was on the roster for like the first I heard years. that. Yeah. So like there were some guys. <clears throat> Zeke, are you breaking news right now? Are you are Adam Schefter like in the chat? CJ, CJ going back to Philly. Philly. That would make a lot of sense. That's a big deal. Uh 11, 11 million a year. Not Eagle sure. Our safety are signing uh, CJ Jones for three years, 33 on max value. So it's probably if he were to meet all of his incentives. But yeah, yeah. that would be my guess. So, that, so, okay. So, like, the thing about this that I like is who did the Lions sign? They re signed Reeves Maben, Badgley. Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. But, like, who did they actually sign? In free agency, uh, you know what? We'll just we'll just switch yeah, we'll it over to our roster changes. So we re-signed Reeves Maven to the highest core special team contract in history. Glasgow Badgley Mosley and just uh, re-signed Skipper. And on the free agent side, uh, we signed Amik Robinson, the cornerback from the Raiders, and Marcus Davenport, the edge rusher from Minnesota. And then we traded for Carlton Davis, the cornerback from the Bucks. So those so, are our changes so far, or not changes, the re-signings as well. So whomever of those guys, and I think it's Robertson and Davenport that are the only ones you can ask this question about, if those are unrestricted free agents, <clears throat> they would count against any compensatory formula um, for the Lions because we had signed them on the market and added them to our team. Now, if they were cut or released – and we signed them, they don't count against the formula. So that would be my question as to those two players. Was they did they just run their deals just run out, or were they let go from their respective teams and we signed them? So either way, we've got Jonah Jackson, who has now left the team. He now he's now an LA Ram who's getting paid 17 a year. Gardner Johnson is now an Eagle making 11 or 10 or nine, five or something like that. <laughs> right. So like either way right now, the compensatory pick formula is in the favor of the lions. Right. So like with the remaining, with the remaining cap space that they have, you could see them maybe sign one or two guys, five, $10 million a year, somewhere in that range. Um, but then I think they're done or they could be done now. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to sign another offensive lineman like day three yeah. or day four, whoever was left of the guards or whatever. So <clears throat> just to have somebody on the roster going into the, into the draft. Cause I don't think they want a Wosika to be the other guy in between Decker and, and Ragnall. So, um, but there's also the draft, right? So, like, I think, I mean, as much as I liked Jonah Jackson and I thought he played well for us, um, he wasn't a a top guard in the NFL. He was a serviceable guard, and 17 million bucks a year is not. I mean, I'd rather draft a guard in the third round, get 85 percent of his performance or quality as a rookie, and save 16 million dollars and put that somewhere else. Yeah, basically, you know, and so like if you look at the guards that just got money in this on day one, you have yep. Landon Dickerson at twenty one, you've got Robert Hunt at twenty, you've got Jonah Jackson at seventeen. Um, there's other guys too that I'm forgetting, but like the Rams Lance, re-signed Kevin Dotson at sixteen. Dotson at sixteen, the Rams spent ninety nine million dollars for their starting guards this off season. They shed oh. so much cap last year. Uh, and and still made the playoffs and damn near beat us, uh, but like they shed so much cap last year that this year, I mean, watch out! They're gonna be able to put some pieces together. Now, I I think they're gonna they may win the NFC West this year uh, over the the Forty ers It would be interesting. Those two teams don't like each other much. They do not. So it, that is a Michigan Ohio State kind of hatred. <laughs> okay. So, that's, that's um, yeah. Should I have gone Detroit Red Wings versus Colorado? It's a little yeah. aged, but um, same. 
yeah, those two teams really hated each other in the nineties. Um, yeah, and the early two thousands. Yes, <laughs> Thank, yeah, go blue. So, I'm actually quite, as I described it to you earlier, my spirits are buoyed by this free agency class that we have had. Not because, you know, it's just like one big addition, like you know, Chris J- Chris Jones or somebody like that. He would have been awesome. Sure would have, you know. But when I look at the roster and I see how these guys are gonna get are gonna fit in, um I think I like where the team is. So like I like that it's Graham Glasgow for seven a year and not Jonah for 17, even though I do I think that I would concede that Jonah is the better of the two guards. You know, I like uh trading for Carlton Davis because like the talk was well the Lions could be in the market for Legereus Sneed you know and like I think that that would have been higher draft compensation to pay him more you know and so is who's the better player Legereus Sneed or Carlton Davis and it's probably Legereus Sneed right but that doesn't mean that I don't think that Carlton Davis isn't a quality cornerback you know and so like one thing that you and I have talked about quite a lot is One thing that it appears that Brad Holmes is trying to do in his roster building is to build in these kind of cycles into the roster. So he signs David Montgomery in free agency. He drafts Jameer Gibbs. So by the time that Montgomery's contract's up, Gibbs is on the last year of his rookie deal. He signs Alex and he extends Alex Anzalone. He drafts Jack Campbell. So by the time that Anzalone's contract is up, Campbell will be in the last year or maybe the, the fourth year of his rookie deal, right? So now I I look at what he's doing in this offseason, and I think he's trying to set up the next <clears throat> couple cycles. So yep. you bring in Marcus Davenport on a one-year flyer, right? So he's going to be an edge. He, was, he played for Aaron Glenn in New Orleans. Um, there's some familiarity there, so they understand who the guy is, intangibles and grit and all that, right? And then um, – you could be looking to like maybe draft like somebody like Chop Robinson or Darius Robinson at edge at 29. And then you might have a veteran that you can play in front of them for at least a year that they can sit, get game experience, end up going through an, an entire offseason workout program, that kind of thing, get them ready to become professionals. Or maybe it's we traded for Carlton Davis and we drafted somebody like Kool-Aid McKinstry and Kool-Aid can, he'll have like a role in like dime packages, but Carlton Davis is going to be the guy that is going to take the heavy snap load and like, you can basically sit and develop, right? Like draft and stash almost, you know? So like, uh, I think it was mentioned in the chat here, like, you know, they traded up in the third round last year for Broderick Martin and they redshirted him. You know, and so we talked to Kent, uh, Kent Lee Platty uh, a week or so ago, and, you know, he said, um, you know, you bring a guy like that on because you see something in him that you want to develop, you know, and maybe they just needed this time to get his body right or heal from an undisclosed injury or they're teaching him something that they want him to do. Right? Yeah. So he's going to be a true nose tackle. And like at Lee McNeil – at least when Martin is in the game, is going to be your three tech, which he played pretty well at times this last season. So can Martin be on the field for like running downs and then you move to a more aggressive pass rush, collapse the pocket type of lineup? Now, because they have Broderick Martin and we, we don't know anything about him as far as his play on the field, somebody they could still go out and sign a DJ reader. Just because you have Martin doesn't mean you can't sign the other guy, yep. you know. But I think that that is where Brad has tried to put the roster: is that like okay, base is covered, like we can put a beating heart into these starting positions if we had to play today. Now let's go to the draft, see what, see how and be it's open, out. right? Right, and you're open, open that way, and you don't have to go have, like, well, I have to get a cornerback because we don't have anybody. Well, we we improved at free agency now that cornerback is a need but it's not a you have to draft it with 29 or you're doing it wrong kind of thing 
And I had, a, I had a family member, I was telling you earlier, I had a family member asking me like, what did I think about the free agency? And did we get better or did we get worse? And I, I think we got better. Like overall, yeah. Was it a bummer that Jonah Jackson left? Yeah, but I'm I'm not going to pay him 17 million bucks a year. He was uh, graded 61. He had, a, he had a 61 grade. Glasgow was a 74.9 grade. Glasgow p- played more snaps than him. So Gl- Glasgow actually played better than Jonah Jackson did. We're paying him $10 million less. I think that's a win for us. We get to save that cap space. Now, granted, we now have to figure out a guard spot, which, like you said, we may get um, another, you know, a, a guard and day, you know, day three, day four of free agency, or maybe we Literally pick one up in the draft. Time. Yeah, like yeah. there's no round that I don't think a guard could be in play for the Lions. Right. And... If you can get a guard in, say, round three, round two, round four, whatever, like you're going to get that guy, and they're going to be at least 80, 85% of what um, Jonah Jackson did. But instead of 17 million, you're going to pay him less than a million. And I think that's a win. I, I'd pay less, less than a million for 85% of Jackson. Um, even though he, Jackson was, he was okay. Like, I think we can get okay just about anywhere. So, like, on the line, I'm not worried. Um, do I think we got worse? I guess technically just cause we have to fill a spot and we don't know what that's going to be like yet, but on the cornerback, both of the guys that we got are better than, uh, Jerry Jacobs, better than Will Harris, better than Kendall Vildor. So I think we improved in the secondary. We've got an edge rusher. That's got some experience, um, both in the NFL and with our coaching staff. I think we've improved there. So like overall, I think we have improved. It wasn't a huge splash and we didn't, uh, and I forget somebody had mentioned it, um, uh, talking about moving the needle. Um, when you're as good as you are, like if you're a top eight team in the NFL, it's really hard to move the needle a long ways. Cause you're already so you're already cl- close to full. Right. So, um, it's going to be really hard to move the needle in that kind of way. So do I think we moved the needle? I think we did. I think we moved it up. I think we moved it in a, in a better spot than it was previous. And um, I think it gives us uh, an ability to have an open draft where we can take essentially the best player available. You're going to be at 29, right? It, well, yes, right? But like most of the time, it's like best player available that meets a need. We don't really have a need. We don't have a, a really strong need. Could use a wide receiver. Could always use cornerback depth. We could use a guard. Do we need a quarterback right now? Not really. Do we need a, a tackle? Not really, but we could, right? Maybe maybe we're going to draft a tackle that can play guard for a year while um, while Decker is on his way out. Um, and then he, maybe he moves over or something. I don't know. Or maybe it's just a depth tackle that we can, we can snag. So I think it gives us an open open area for what we want to do in the draft or what we can do in the draft. Speaking of um, open tackles or what have you, uh, more breaking news. Um, more breaking uh, news. Lions are bringing back Dan Skipper on a one-year deal. Yeah, it's already in the ticker. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I got you, man. Yeah, Skipper. Oh, You'll have to watch it go around. It'll get there. All right, fine. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Danielle Hunter to the um, – Texans for forty eight million dollars. Two years forty eight. So he's getting basically twenty four or twenty five. Twenty four a year. Yeah. So that's a bummer. I'd have done that. I don't know that I would. I mean, like, I, I think he's fine. Two years? Like, I mean, but like our window is two we're, years. But we're <laughs> I mean, to that end, we we are going to talk about who they have up for extensions next year, and it's legit a lot of people. And there's so, only so much money to go around. You want we want to move into the roster review? Sure. Okay. And I guess any any other comments from the chat about what we want to talk, anything that we want to talk in uh, free agency and trade land? I will challenge Steve-O that, um, assuming that Carlton Davis isn't hurt at some point, like um, watch him play against wide receivers and then compare how Jerry Judy did it. Or not Jerry Judy, Jerry Jacobs. Sure. And... Um, and tell me if you, I mean, tell me how, what you think the difference is in those two players, because their stats are so similar. Like I, I saw the same thing like, Oh, Jerry Jacobs is 
seven hundred and forty nine thousand dollars, and his stats are the same at, as Carlton Davis. Like, there's a reason Carlton Davis is worth fifteen million, and that Jerry Jacobs is worth seven hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> you know, and it's because Jerry Jacobs is not very good, unfortunately. Like, um, I saw J- DJ Moore run right past him twice. You know, so I'm I'm not. I'm not upset that Jerry Jacobs is off the team. Jacobs was an overall defensive grade of 57.1 with a coverage grade of 54.5, both of which are not good. Uh, Carlton Davis is an upgrade a bit. He had a 63.1 overall defensive score and a 63.3 coverage grade. Um, So like overall he was better. Is he, is he luxurious Sneed? No. Is he Jalen Ramsey? No. Is he better than Jerry Jacobs? Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah, I would say so. You know, and the proof is going to be what, you know, what the de- past defense looks like next year. Yeah, you know, remember the Lions aren't done, you know. You know, there's still time in free agency. I don't think that they'll add many more people, but they could. And, um, you know, every day that – goes by, you know, everybody gets cheaper because there's less demand, you know, and we're getting closer to the draft. So, and then there's the draft. So Lions are going to have, I believe, six picks now. No, they still have seven picks. They just appear in a different order. Yeah, Yeah. you're you're right. Maybe Davis isn't either, you know, but like maybe maybe Emmanuel Mosley, you know, is not hurt the entire year this year either you know and just the only thing i care about is that the pass defense gets better yeah you know and but like i don't think that you're actually saying that um jerry jacobs is as good as carlton davis but like you're you're trying to make a point raw stats were similar right so yeah or maybe you're just a huge jerry jacobs fan i don't know (laughs) everybody's got everybody's got a favorite yeah. Well, let's let's switch over to the roster review. Sure. I'm gonna stop yeah, sharing my screen. Yeah, that that's you. You got the. So, I feel bad because I'm so bad at this kind of stuff. But like, I don't have anything that makes it look nice, which I feel bad about. So production me... quality is not the reason why people come to us, Drew. It's content. No. I it's the it's the it. thoughts and the analytics and the bullshitting. Oh, good. Okay, so does it need to be bigger? Uh, add it to the stage. Yep. How do I make this bigger? Uh, control share? scroll. No, it's not doing it. Oh, here. Oh, that's Google Sheets. Never mind. Here we go. Okay, so with the way that the Roster looks right now. Let's just kind of go through it by position. Um, You've got Goff and Hooker. Pretty solid there, right? I mean, like, I don't think that they're going to make any monumental moves uh, at quarterback. You know, could they carry a third quarterback? So if that's the, if that's a yes, I mean, technically they carried three last year. Yeah. But uh, Hooker was on like the pop or injured list for most of that. Running back, we still got the same. The same core, Montgomery, Gibbs, and Reynolds are all back, and Jamar Jefferson is still under contract. So there's four running backs, and Jefferson is probably either a special teamer or on the practice squad. Over at tight end, we've got, of course, Laporta, Brock Wright is back, James Mitchell, and Zylstra, and I imagine that there will be three of those guys active on game day, and probably Zylstra will be the practice squad tight end. Yep. Yep. Wide receivers is starting to look a little bit different. So we have Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, who Dan Campbell said had earned full-time starter snaps at one of his off-season press conferences. I don't know if that was at the Combine or just after the season. Yeah, that was at the Combine. Okay, so I would would assume that J-Mo is going to have a higher snap count this year. Khalif Raymond is obviously backup slot, kick returner. Um, type of role, and then they have uh, Antoine Green, who was a, a seventh rounder. So I do think that like wide receiver, wide receiver depth, or a just 
another starting wide receiver wherever you end up getting that, whether you bring back like Josh Reynolds, Donovan People Jones, or if you sign a guy in free agency, um, cheap guy, or if you go to the draft. Well, lots of wide receivers in the draft this year. <clears throat> All are options. And then yep. in the offensive line, we've got the the core of Decker, Ragnow, Glasgow, and Sewell. Those are the anchors. And then the backups are, let's put him in here now that we know. Dan Skipper is your swing tackle. You've got backup guards of Colby Sorsdal and uh, Quadi, I think is how you say his name, Iwosika. And then Connor Galvin is probably a backup tackle slash practice squad guy. Yeah. So, um, not too shabby. Get but, some room for growth, though, right? So, like, our offensive guard position, our starting left guard is going to be a thing that we need to figure out. Yeah, agreed. You know, and so this is just a little list of the whole roster. and We're going to get to the defense here in a second. But this time next year, these are the players that are eligible for extensions or unrestricted free agents. Goff, Taylor Decker, Penny Sewell, John Kaminsky, Amon Ross St. Brown, Ali McNeil, Derek Barnes, Brock Wright again, Levi Nwuzurike, who I'm almost certain will not be on the roster, Mel Fonwu, Badgley, who I'm also certain will not be on the roster, Iwosika, Zilstra, James Houston, um, Jamar Jefferson, and uh, the new CFL defensive end that they signed, Matthew Betts. So mm. that is a lot of dudes, and I assume that, like, Amon Ross St. Brown might be extended this offseason still before the draft. Um, just depends on what they're kind of looking for. You know, like you might have to pick up Penny Sewell's fifth year option now. What do you do about Taylor Decker? Are you gonna let Goff walk? You know, these kinds of these kinds well, of Well, that's where that's where when people say like, oh, we should have uh we should have gotten um Chris Jones at 30 million a year, yeah, or 20. we should have gotten Brian Burns, like, okay, cool, but like Let's take a look, uh, slide that uh, over to those uh, re-signings, right? So, um, Kirk Cousins just signed $45 million a year. Yep. Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins are about the same, right? They're, they're similar capabilities, give or take, uh, any, any given Sunday, right? So, Jared Goff is going to be in that $45 million range. Maybe as much as 50 depending on uh, what we do as a team. Um so he is currently at 30. Say he moves up to 50, that's $20 million raise, right? We have $31 million in cap space this year. So all things being equal, which I know they're not because not everybody's going to be on the roster, but um, if, if we go from having $30 million in cap space to whatever the cap goes up, say it's another $20 million, say we got $50 million to, to play with. Goff takes up 20 of that. Cool. Uh, Panay Sewell. He is currently a $7.7 million cap hit. He's going to make 27. He's going to make, he's going to, right? He'll, he's going to reset he'll set the market. market. He'll set the market. Yep. I'm going to go with 27 because it's an easy number to say $20 million more than he's going to get a $20 million raise. So between Goff and Sewell, that's $40 million of our 50 ish that we're thinking that we would probably have. Oh, and by the way, Amon Ross St. Brown needs to get uh, re-signed. And he is currently, um, let me see if I can find it here. He's going to make um, 3 point something this year. 3.5 million. He's going to probably get 27, 28. Yeah. Yeah. So an additional $25 million. Now we've got $65 million in raises. Right. Not total cap hit, but raises in those three guys. And we still need to get Decker. We still need to get Ali McNeil. We're still going to need, like, Malifon, who played well. He'll, I mean, these aren't going to be $10, 15000000 million raise guys, but we still need to bring them back. And we need to figure out how the hell that the next year, when we start looking at some of our other guys, right? Uh, yeah. Hutchinson being the big one. So, like, there's just, there's, do we have a lot of money right now? We sure do, but it's not going to necessarily be easy to retain all of our top guys. It's just not. Yeah. So defense, I think, starting to look a little bit better. Um, 
if we had to go and play a game today, my I think that the defensive line would look like Hutchinson, Kaminsky, McNeil, and then either Pascal or Davenport, whoever wins that camp battle, maybe Davenport. And then you've got James Houston, Matthew Betts. We don't know what Matthew Betts looks like. And then your interior defensive line depth looks like Broderick Martin, Levi Muzarike. I mean, I don't think that's likely. Uh, someone, I don't know who this guy is. I think his name is Chris Smith. And like, who else? I mean, like Benito Jones, could you bring him back? You know, draft a kid, <clears throat> you know. But if you're going to, depending on where you draft him, you know, you might you might be pl- plugging him into a starter role. Uh, Can you I'm, imagine what that would look like if that said uh, uh, Chris Jones instead of John Kaminsky, though? I know it's great. It's just crazy. so sexy. <laughs> one one area I don't think that they're going to make any type of real splash is linebacker. Anzalone's here. Campbell plays on the other side. I have this set up as a as a four. Rodriguez, <laughs> Barnes, and of course Jalen Reeves Maven gets ten or fifteen snaps at linebacker a game. Uh, in coverage situations, he's a core special teamer, though. Um, cornerback, we got Sutton, Branch, and Carlton Davis. Backups are Mosley when he's healthy, Amik Robinson, Stephen Gilmore, and I left the room open for maybe there's a rookie, you know, soon to be, you know, soon to be on the roster. And then, of course, safeties, we've got Kirby Joseph and probably Mel Fonwu. Brandon Joseph is a special teams player, practice squad player. So I do think that there is some room for the like developmental specialist hybrid. You're either some kind of safety slash linebacker, you know, safety slash nickel of that kind of role. So, and like the lions like guys that can play, um, multiple roles on defense and on offense. So, you know, like I do, so like I was updating that list. I know it looks terrible. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, A couple days ago, and it had guys like Deshaun Watson, or no, Deshaun Elliott, sorry. Yeah. Deshaun Elliott's on there still. Will Harris. Will Harris. Amani Araraue. You know, the the Oquaras. You know, uh, Harris. What's his Charles name? Harris? Charles Harris. You know, and like I look at the I look at the roster now, and whether that's just I'm looking through it like hope filled glasses or whatever, but like I do think that the Lions have better players top to bottom on their roster than they did this time last year. I agree. Uh, do I think that the cap's going to keep going up 20 or 30, 30 million was more than they were predicting. Right. And the thing to remind, to remind everybody about is this is the year where they got the new television deal money. Yeah. So the new television deal money doesn't kick in every year, you know? So like, I think that this will be like a spike <clears throat> on the cap and, but like, we're, we're going to work our way back down to like a normal, or maybe it'll just keep going up with like in little tiny increments, but like thirty was more than everybody thought, and like it yeah. really helped. You know, I think more people got tagged this year than on average because the extra space allowed for it to happen. Like teams like the Saints were got more quickly cap compliant because they were just gifted another five six million bucks or whatever it ended up being. You know? I think it also ended up. I think that's why a guy like Jonah Jackson got seventeen million. Sure, because the cap the cap went up. Therefore, you had the money. Yikes! Right. I did see something that the cap went up from last year to this coming year by like thirty million, but thirty point six million or whatever, and that was the salary cap in nineteen ninety four or nineteen ninety six. So like, wow, <laughs> you know, 30 years ago, well, a little less, 25, 30 years ago, $30 million was what the NFL players had to spend on their team. And like, you know, it's just kind of interesting that it's like, oh, that used to be what you could spend. And now it's like, that's just the increase that everybody gets, you know, this year. 
So yeah, that's crazy. Uh, next year, as from what over the cap shows, we have a total uh, cap space of one hundred and fifty point five million. With how many players? But the roster, yeah, twenty five players. Right, right. So of that one hundred and fifty, you're looking at um, golf. Mm-hmm. Let's say let's call it fifty to make it easy because now it's down to a hundred. You're looking at Sewell, probably another thirty. Now you're down to seventy million. Now you're looking at uh, St. Brown, close to thirty, just to make easy numbers. Now you're down to forty million, and we're still we're only at twenty eight total players with forty million dollars in cap space left. If we were to do the expected numbers for those, just those three guys, that's rough. So the is problem, it doable? Yes. So the problem is when you draft well, that the bill comes due all at the same time, right? Yeah. The entire roster is up in three years. You know, there's no one, but that's the way the NFL is now. Like it's hard to find guys who aren't like absolute cornerstones of your team, a Patrick Mahomes, a Josh Allen kind of player who have more job security than three years into the future. So I do think you're going to have to keep drafting well or keep signing these veteran flyer. You were hurt last year. You didn't get a chance to play last year for whatever reason. Flyer deals just to fill out roster spots, and you're going to have to keep drafting well because you're going to have to make decisions on who you're going to keep because if you have eight guys that could all make $10 million a year coming up on contracts, they're all not going to just play for $10 million a year. And then you have the same problem the next year and the same problem the year after that, you know, like if, if the lions want to keep the majority of their roster, they need to go get a quarterback on a rookie deal next year. I, yeah, I, I agree. You know, and it, if it's uh, like, we're going to move heaven and earth, you know, to trade up, you know, however many spots, you might just have to do that. And it's going to be for like the fifth best quarterback on the board. So there was, let me see if I can find it here. Why is my mouse doing crazy things? Put, put uh, batteries in it. Weird. All right. So. Um, equals that divided by that. Of course. Why is that doing that? Patrick Mahomes restructured his contracts. So now the Chiefs are under the cap. Save 21 million bucks. Oh, wow. and the, uh, the, the Pittsburgh Carolina trade. Panthers get De- Deontay Johnson and a seventh round pick in the Steelers. Well, that's not. Oh, they get Dante. They get. Okay. So this is kind of interesting. So the Panthers are are trading for Deontay Johnson in a seventh rounder, and they're giving the Steelers Dante Jackson (laughs) and a sixth round pick. So almost that's about as equitable a trade. That's about as even a trade as you're ever going to see player for player and almost equal draft compensation. And damn near the same names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. And like, I was like, I had to read it twice. I was like, oh, D Johnson and D Jackson. What are we doing here? <laughs> so this was from 2020. So this was from 2022. Um, we did this uh, kind of breakdown of the top 10 player, top 10 contracts at each position. Um, and we'll, we'll do a re a refresh of that uh, for this year. But at that point, the cap was two hundred and eight point two million in twenty twenty two. If you if you had just one player at each position, but it was the best player at that position, you would pay three hundred and thirty point five million dollars. So fifty percent over the cap just for the um, seventeen players, one at each position, right? If you had just the tenth best player, or and we're saying best as, you know, if you're the 10th highest paid, you're the 10th best because that's the only way we can do it with, with these numbers. But if you're the 10th highest paid player and just for those 17 players, you're still looking at 194.9 million or 94% of the cap. 
which goes to show you can't even do you can't even just do like the tenth best player, tenth highest pay, you know player across the the board. You just don't have enough money. And when you got guys like Sewell, Hutch, St. Brown, like those guys are not going to be just the tenth highest played at, at their position, right? They're going to be they're going to be number one. They're going to be the setters, the the market setters. So it's going to be really tough to sign all of those guys with even with the cap going up because while this was 2022 numbers i'm willing to bet that the same percentage the same ratio is going to be the same now it might not be um trent williams aav at that point was 23 million dollars per year as the left tackle sewell's going to get more than that when when he gets re-signed right it's going to be closer to 30. but it's still going to be probably 11 percent of the cap which is what Trent Williams was um, at the uh, in 2022. So it'll be really curious. I'll I'll, uh, I'll commit to updating this for the top ten uh, for this past year and seeing what that looks like because that'll kind of help us figure out. All right, what is what does next year look like when we're going to go and try to get Amon Ross St. Brown um, and Sewell and Goff and Hutchinson the year after and Ali McNeil the year at like. It's going to be ugly. We're not going to be able to do it all. We're going to have to make choices. Yeah, it's the choices that are going to be fascinating to me. I mean, do you? I mean, if it's somebody like Derek Barnes, Ify Melifonwu, Rodrigo, James Houston, I don't think that it's, oh, no. Those guys are off the roster, but those are not the guys that are going to cost you $10 million a year. Yeah. You know, so my, my question is of the guys that are going to cost you 10. Are you going to, are you going to let McNeil walk? Are you going to let, I hope Apple not. He was like the top five DT in uh, the NFL. So, I mean, like you're not going to, let Hutch walk. You're not going to let Sewell walk. You're not going to let St. Brown walk. Right. Like I, and I assume that when they get there, like Campbell, Laporta, Branch, Gibbs all get second deals. I mean, they all started off real good, except Campbell. I was like, well, most of them, you know, and like, so Donkey Kong is right. Like Brad, Brad Holmes does have a plan. Whether I can figure out what the fuck it is or not, <laughs> he certainly has one. He's not operating am- amongst chaos. You know, he's there's a formula for what his how his mind works. Yeah, and he's right. It is working. The Lions won what twelve games this year and went to the NFC Championship game. So yeah. it's working better than anybody's plan that has occupied those positions in my goddamn lifetime. So that's not true. <clears throat> um, so it, it is true. Like they can find the money to sign a player if they want. The thing is they have to make a choice in order right. to find that money. You're making the choice. Are you making the choice to go? All right, well, I'm going to sign Daniel Hunter at 25 or $28 million a year, but I am now choosing to um, not resign Goff. Or I'm going to choose not to, um, you know, to to cut Decker or something next year because that twenty eight million dollars has to come from somewhere because it is there is a salary cap. So yeah. yeah, I do believe that they can sign they can find the money to sign any player they want. They have to make the choice of all right, who aren't you going to sign? Who are you going to cut for cap space? Right. You know, and so like the way that they structure the contracts when they sign them will also like help alleviate, you know, year by year what the, what it's going to cost them on the cap, right? Yeah. So they can exceed the cap. How like someone like the Chargers have done this year that the Saints have done. But if you look at teams like the Chargers and the Saints, like we have watched the Saints roster generally degrade over the last three or four seasons and 
in the case of the Chargers, they are talking about having to get rid of one or more. I would call them difference makers on either their offense with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams or their defense with Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack. And just to get under the cap, just to become compliant with league rules, you know? And so like, is the cap real? Can you find the money to go find a player? Yeah. You are going to have to make a choice what that looks like on a year. I know the charge. Well, I, I think that the problem with the chargers is that they are hoping that someone mm-hmm. will give something up trade yeah, for one of their guys, whether it's a sixth round pick or whatever, they're trying to get anything back on, at this point and get under. And what I think the NFL is going to do is be like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And like, we're going to force you to cut one of these guys and we're going to sign them on the open market, you know, cause you know, and I think that what will end up happening, they're 21 over right now, I think per OTC. And uh, if they just cut Mike Williams, I think that they just skate by and get under and then they, then they have enough time to either work out a trade. If someone wants Joey Bosa restructure, restructure, that kind of thing, you know, and like, one thing that Brad likes to do um, with his free agent contracts or whatever is he likes to build in void years, you know, and which are little tiny cap hits at some point, two, three years down the line. And lots of his contracts that he signed has void years. Are the Chargers signing players in free agency? I believe they are signing players in free agency. I don't know how that works, but like. Because um, they, they don't have to meet the cap until. Uh... For three fifty tomorrow, four, four, yeah, yeah, four p.m. tomorrow. Yeah, basically. So, <clears throat> you know, if they, you know, if they shed one guy, they might get under. You know, they won't have enough room to actually. They've like, made one move. They have signed safety Alo- Alohi Gilman um, to a two-year ten point one two five million dollar contract. So yep, five yep, million dollars per year. That's it. Gus Edwards from the Ravens. Okay, that was not listed on uh, PFF's list of transactions, but yeah, so they've done two things, yeah, they and are, not they are big not. money things. Yeah, you know, so I think one thing that's interesting about they let's see, Arizona's not hurting, New England isn't, Chicago's not. Of all the teams in the top five they are the ones who are having the biggest problem with their cap. So you could cut someone like Anthony Tottingham. Anthony, welcome. Yeah. New, 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 new guy in the chat. Welcome. Anthony. Love it. Um, yep. And he, Chauncey's back to the Eagles fly, fly high, soar free. Yonder I'm surprised first. Michael Wartnaby is not in here. He's the big Eagles fan. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna message him. You know, he and was so gonna like, join. You can replace, like, say, let's just say Malik Neighbors was there at five, and you cut Mike Williams to in order to get under the cap, and you just replace him with a a, a good player on a rookie deal at the same position. Okay, fun. But like, mm-hmm. the better move for your long term cap health would be like trade down, pick up another third or second round pick and, you know, make a couple, couple guys on rookie deals and like get the whole thing up. He's fine either way. Yeah. So, you know, so that's fine. One, one last exercise that I think we, 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 we want to try tonight is I had this idea um, that we, we don't actually do a mock. But like what we'll use is we'll do like the mock draft simulator to give us an idea like who's on the board at pick 29. Mike had it ready. It's fucking all over it. I am I am the reason this show ticks. So last year, as far as as far as I am concerned, like Brad Holmes surprised me with whom he drafted in the first round. Well, basically the entire time he he surprised me. (laughs) <laughs> but um surprised but, or um, disappointed all right see so surprised all of the above yeah. well <clears throat> i could have gotten by i think i could have handled gibbs but when he you threw campbell on top of it i really got upset. 
But um, <laughs> <laughs> classic episode. <laughs> so, yeah, no kidding. I thought what would be interesting to do, especially with the help of the chat, is that let's see who's on the board at pick 29. And let's talk about the guys that we would never consider. The guys that were just so off the radar, off the board, that it would just be like, no, there's no chance that they draft him. You've got to be kidding me. This is the board. Fuck me. <laughs> okay. JJ so, McCarthy didn't go in the top 10? Well, so that's one thing that they don't do a very good job of on the simulator is that it's overwhelmingly likely that four quarterbacks go in the top 15, but they're not. Did, they did you let Hatters in? What did he do now? You know what? This, this, I mean, we don't, I wouldn't say we have any trolls in the chat, but Hatters is as <laughs> close to a troll as we have. Uh, I know it's all in good fun. We still appreciate you, Hatters. Stop it, Hatters. Stop it. Stop. It. So, not Will Harris. I'd rather have Goff back on the team than Will Harris, unfortunately. But yeah, if the board felt like this, I would just turn the card in for Leatu Latu. I think that he is amazing. But good evening to you, Hatters. Let's talk about – there's one guy I want to talk about right away, and that's Tyler Guyton. I knew it. I was like, it's going to be the tackle. Yep. You cannot – A6, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, can you click on Guyton for me, Mike? I can. Uh, and then go to first look, please. Hit the like button. This dude is 6'8", almost 6'8", 330, with hands like dinner plates. He has, like, enormous hands. And so, like, I don't think that you draft him at 29 and say, we're going to start you year one. But Taylor Decker is up next, yeah. next season. And can you say something like, you know, the Eagles do this quite a lot, uh, all up and down their drafts, is they they draft a year ahead. Are the Lions in a spot to draft a year ahead? So if Brad Holmes does, in fact, tr try and set up his position groups with this kind of cycle in mind, what is to stop them from saying, let's take a developmental, enormously athletic tackle when we know there's a need coming up in 12 months and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get rid of Eric Decker. But, like, we have to start planning for the eventuality, you know, and, like, maybe we just can't afford to pay Eric Decker, I don't know, let's call it 16 a year, 17 a year on an extension, when we could be paying this guy four, three and a half. <clears throat> At yeah. pick 29, you know, or whatever. And he will have practice reps against, you know, Marcus Davenport and Aiden Hutchinson. He'll have a year in the room, you know, to learn from Penny Sewell and Eric Decker. And it may end up getting some injury snaps too, right? Yeah, you never know, right? Like, and maybe there's, you know, one trend of things that are happening that's happening in the NFL is that a lot of teams are lining up with six offensive linemen. And we saw, unfortunately, like especially in the Dallas game, how often the Lions will bring in a Dan Skipper and put him at where you know the tight end might line up and just run a six-man offensive line. Okay, you just resign Skipper to a one-year deal, but like I don't think that, that means that you can't have one of your offensive line spots go to Tyler Guyton, draft and stash, yeah. develop this guy a little bit. And instead of it being a sixth round pick, we need to address center before Decker. Why do we need to address center before Decker? You have Frank Ragnow and Graham Glasgow on the roster. Yeah, well, so um, Ragnow has the injury history, right? Um, nope. Chronic, never going to fully heal. Nope. Um, every year could be his last. So I can understand that comment, right? Um, if we win the Super Bowl, um, I think Ragnar's done. I think he'll be go out on top. So I, I mean, I, I get that, but I'm not sure a center in the first round would be a way I'd, I'd go. Um, 
Especially not. I this would season. probably. Yeah. Yeah, I I think if, I would go tackles before center. If Jackson Powers Johnson was on the board, the kid from Oregon, he would be somebody that I would say I'll have the conversation. But like, it's over then for sure. Frank Ragnow has already said he's coming back to play next year. So, like, let's yeah. put those, those yeah. outs to rest. <laughs> now, he might retire at the end of next year, but centers are positions that you can go find. Are you going to find Frank Ragnow again? No, probably not. Can you find a, a good center? Yeah, you can. Can you find a good tackle? I think that's a little bit harder to do. It's a lot oh, harder to do. They would retire if they won the Super Bowl. Who knows? Yeah. But you know what? To be honest, like if we win the Super Bowl, even if it's just one time, I'm, I mean, I'd love to set ourselves up to be a dynasty and just win every year or, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I just want one. Like I, I would be thrilled with one, even if it was the only one for the next, you know, 10, 15 years or whatever. So 20 I was years. Listening, I was listening to a podcast this weekend, shockingly. And um, I'm going to go look for it right now so that I can um, give exactly what I was listening to out to the listening public. Um, Let's see. I was looking at the... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Just say your thing. I'm looking for it. Yeah, I was going to say, I was looking at the Tyler Guyton analysis and like the cons, strike placements off, allowing defenders to more easily roll off blocks, hand placement inconsistent, like... Those are all easy things you can coach and and tweak the the mechanics of. Um, truly elite movement skills uh, fires off like some of these. These are not as good. I mean, those are not as uh, things that you would teach as much as they are just almost natural gifts. Um, you, you know, movement skills, uh, the speed of firing off the ball. Um, like those kind of things are are much harder to teach. So I I, I like this guy um, just from what I've seen and the fact that the dude's six seven three twenty seven, and they say could play tight end. Yeah, this dude has got to be a freak of an athlete. So, okay, so the the podcast that I listen to, and I recommend that you guys go and listen to this just to see where I'm coming from. The Detroit Lions Breakdown Podcast. I believe it's with Eric Schlitt and uh, Joe Canina, I think is the uh, scout that he talks to. Um, Episode 301, (laughs) NFL Combine Review and Free Agency Preview. Just a ton of good insight as to how the Lions have addressed positions, what they look for in players um, under Brad and Dan. That's a lot of good. It's a lot of good stuff. <clears throat> so Anthony says we need edge now. Well, they've already signed two edge rushers, technically three. If you want to say they brought back James Houston, they're not going to draft a wide receiver. But we should talk about that. We, next we will draft a wide receiver. Just I don't think it'll be with the 29th pick. So let's. So with this board, you have two wide receivers that are, I think, that can play X for you, and they're right there. Ad Mitchell from texas had a wonderful combine troy franklin troy franklin is one of the skinniest dudes you'll ever see he's like six six three 180 185 187 jesus you know like um <laughs> are exactly and that's why we're doing this that's why we're doing this a6 you, you hit the nail on the head is that like if if we if i said you, they're not going to take it. That's the guy we have to talk about is the, the guy who's <laughs> completely off our radar. So it's, you know, that's why we are mocking the mock. <laughs> right, exactly. So, like, if they were like, hey, we need an X. I want a 6'4", 6'3", wide receiver that does something different than the other guys that we have on our roster for Jared's sake, you know, or whatever. Franklin or Mitchell on this board – yeah, they're going to – okay, but who is that, Steve-O? I mean, that's what we're trying to do here is trying to narrow yeah. that down a little bit, right? So, you know, I don't think that Goff is the kind of quarterback that's like, I'm going to put the ball 40 yards in the air on a three-step drop or whatever. Mims is legit. Mims 
Denzel Mims? That's not who you're talking about. Oh, wait. So, like, I think that either one of those guys could conceivably be in oh, if Probably a Marius Mims from Georgia. A Marius Mims. Oh, that makes sense. Well, Don, I I think that what I'm about to say is super accurate. Don loves him at offensive lineman. <laughs> Don, Don't we I, all? I think in the – was it the Aiden Hutchinson draft? Uh, at two, Don was – was it Evan Neal, Don? Yeah, I Evan Neal was in that. I know we don't have access to that kind of stuff, Steve-O, but, like, there are ways to infer, um, you know, were they a team captain? Like, Brad and Dan love team captains. You know, like, did they contribute on special teams? They love guys that contribute on special teams. So, like, I think that you can, if you were to really dig in, you could find guys that are, like, I think that, this guy is more likely than that guy. Now I might be wrong because they only get to make one pick, you know, in every round. So to, you know, they're given one pick in every round by the NFL. I like Latu as well, uh, Todd Inman. <clears throat> I think he's. I think he would be an excellent guy to pair across from Aiden Hutchinson. But yeah, yeah that's he had an absolutely sick year. But like um, the nice thing I like about him is that he has pass rush moves. Like he can go from one pass rush move into another pass rush move. Like James Houston, he's going to beat you with bend and athleticism, right? This guy has moves. This guy has technique, you know? And so, like, I think that if his if his in medical concerns causes him to fall, which he had a great season and I got checked out at the combine, you know, but if teams, are, if, if teams take him off their board for whatever reason – I, Dan has shown Brad has shown that he'd be willing to take hurt players in the first round. So I don't like Darius Robinson. Let me tell you why. Um, <laughs> he is super redundant to what we already have on the roster. And you know, the guy that he's the most like it's John Kaminsky. They are almost exactly the same height and weight and athletic score. They have the both inside outside versatility And the problem that I have with Darius Robinson is not that he didn't test well, but considering who he was testing with, he tested at the bottom of those groups. You know, he was, he was dead last in the 40, 10 yard split and broad jump in his, in the, in the edge group that he was running with at the combine. And so it's not like he did those things that were, and were, was bad at them, but like in this class, there's more athletic quote unquote, as good or better players that you can take at the same position. So I don't know why you would take him over them. But <clears throat> they might exact do exactly that because I don't see it. All right, so, so let's let's go with a little bit of what Asics is uh, kind of yeah. talking about. Like, hey, we're going to draft a wide receiver, right? Because uh, if we know anything about uh, Brad Holmes, it's to expect the unexpected. We've got... Uh, a, a great tight end. We've got uh, a great wide receiver in St. Brown. Uh, we've got a ton of potential in JMO, right? And then we've got a bunch of guys, Khalif Raymond, Reynolds. Um, that's basically it. Uh, it. You know, in between there, right? So I do think that we are going to take a wide receiver. I don't know if it's going to be in the first round. I don't know if it's going to be at 29. Uh, Because I think we need edge more. So I would lean towards edge. But this being a mock the mock uh, option here, let's talk about the wide receivers um, that would potentially be on our our list. And I'm kind of curious from ASICS, why do you think that he would go with the wide receiver here as opposed to anything else? Like, what is it that you think... um, is going to make him go. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, you know Troy Franklin here. So, but uh, while A6 is thinking about that and typing, what are your thoughts, uh, Drew, on the option? Like, so if we just filter by wide receiver, let's take a peek at some of these guys that are going to be on the list there. And I know Keon Coleman was a guy that we talked about in the past. Um, what 
where where would you see the surprise being of of a like a guy that Brad Holmes might take that might surprise us? Me personally, I think that Keon Coleman would be a surprise. Like I think you could understand the reasoning behind it. Like insanely <clears throat> big, super contested catchability, that type of thing. He played at Michigan State, so I mean, like he's familiar with the state of Michigan. So, you know, agree. There might be some ties there. Okay. Um, hey, you got to go blue in earlier. <laughs> you can go to Michigan State. What's that? You don't root for Michigan State. I mean, I'm, I'm more of a go green guy than anything. You you currently attend Penn State University. This is true. Yeah. So, um, you know. We are I, Penn State. Okay. So, um <laughs> A.D. Mitchell, Keon Coleman, certainly in that same kind of role. You're probably going to play those guys the same. Um, I do like Newton from Illinois, too. Um, I would like to see him on the roster. But, uh, Mike, can you scroll down on this group a little bit? Stop it. I can. You know, but like somebody like Xavier Leggett in round two or even like Devontez Walker would, I think, (laughs) fill the same kind of role if you didn't want to de- dedicate the 29th pick to that to that guy. Um, the guy that I like, if they if the Lions were going to take a wide receiver, <laughs> um, the guy that I like at 29, if he was on the board, is Lad McConkey from Georgia. Like that, he just screams Jared Goff's best friend. He's already gone. He's he went to Arizona. I was like, I didn't see him. But like he is he's fast and quick. He gets open and he catches everything in his radius. And so like, um, I think if you wanted to draft a wide receiver that was going to help Jared Goff, Lad McConkey's the best guy that you could realistically take at the end of the first round. But I don't, I don't know. I don't think that they'll do it, but we should probably talk. I mean, so, but so that's an interesting thing though. Cause like, as we've seen Brad do, if there's a guy that fits what he wants, and he's falling. He hasn't. Um, he hasn't been afraid to jump up and take that person, right? Yeah. Jamison Williams is a good example. Um, last year in the didn't we trade up to get Brian Branch because we're like, holy shit, he's still falling. Yeah, I think we traded up with Green Bay to uh... right. So like, you know, if Lad McConkey's still on the board at twenty seven, uh, Kool Aid McKinnistry just got taken. We're a little bummed because we wanted you know a cornerback. I mean, do we? Potentially just bump up and take a guy like McConkey at uh, 27 because it's not going to cost that much to move up two spots. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so the the place that I think the Lions should consider moving up to <clears throat> is 14 with New Orleans. God, look at all those tackles. Jesus. Well, I mean, and that's what that's exactly what I think that is going to happen is that, like, whether it's wide receiver, corner, or tackle, somewhere in between 14 or 15, one of them's going to go, and then they're all going to start going. And there's going to be a run on the position group. So we got Alt taken number three overall, which is surprising. Sure. Seems crazy. Um, And then you get Latham, Fuega, and then a couple of them all of a sudden like, bang, 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 bang. So, I mean, I would be looking to say, like, who in the middle of the first round would be looking to move down if you wanted to, say, add somebody like Cooper DeGene or, you know, or like, yeah. uh, maybe you think somebody, I don't know, uh, Quinion Mitchell or Jackson Powers Johnson. What would you, what if you get a top 20 pick and a 25 second? I would trade St. Brown. If you, I, uh, AJ Brown got traded for the 18th pick in the draft. So, like, you would trade St. Brown for a top 20 pick and a second round pick? Yeah, I would trade St. Brown. Oh, I don't, I wouldn't. Why? Because I think he's too critical to our offense. And so, we've got a, we've got a win now window right now. So, here's, here's the pushback that I'll put on that. So, like, uh, a year ago, they didn't have Sam Laporta, right? Right. And St. Brown's, 
production didn't change and they added a guy like Sam Laporta. Saint Sam Laporta can do what St. Brown can do. And you could find another wide receiver. Ricky Pearsall is a guy in the St. Brown mold, right? Like it's not so much that I think, I don't think that Amon Ross St. Brown brings like a certain height, weight, speed package to the team. What he excels at is two things, getting open and not dropping the ball. And like, I do think that there are guys, will they be as good as St. Brown or as big of a deal? Like, you know, cause St. Brown was a fourth round pick. <clears throat> I don't think that they will be as big of a deal. I think that you could find a player that can replicate what Amon Ross St. Brown can do. It's not to the same <laughs> degree, but like, but if you're going to give me a top 20 pick and a second round pick, and I can trade you a guy that I've paid no- nothing to. Why would I? Yeah, you need you need talent though. I mean, you can't win without talent, and to to trade that talent, they have... I think he's a cornerstone of what is for the same reasons uh, the Rams didn't trade Cooper Cup. They resigned him and extended him because you need cornerstones to build on the offense, just like you need cornerstones in the defense. And it's typically the best wide receiver you got, the best tackle you got. And the quarterback you got is the typically the, the the pillars of offense. Sure, I get that, and I know I'm getting roasted in the chat or whatever, and that's yeah. fine. But like, yeah. there's a reason that even the Detroit Lions passed on Amon Ross St. Brown three times in the draft. I think if they had it to do so, over again, he doesn't even get to us. Like somebody's going to snag him. Okay, let me ask you this then. So we're we're at seven or whatever the second, you know. The draft plays out differently. It goes, and then Jamar Chase and Amon Ross St. Brown are on the board at seven for the Lions. Are you going to take Amon Ross St. Brown over Jamar Chase? That's my point. Is that like Amon Ross St. Brown is good, but he fits into a very specific system that is asking him to do what he's good at. Great. Scheme and fit for that player has brought out the absolute best. How much better do you think Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be? He doesn't need I, to be any better. He just needs to stay that. So we, we need someone at his Maxed rate. out what he is going to be. That's perfect. Max, I'm right. fine with that. Then you have gotten all the production for the least amount of money that you can pay for him. Right. So now but I, I still need that production. For a first and second round pick and not have to pay him $25 million a year. And I can and not get that many, production. Right. And I can get I can keep how many other players on my roster that I'm going to need to sign next season. So it's not just How do my you... first and second round pick. It's the guys that I can I can keep on the roster with the money I would otherwise pay him. Well, I, I get that, but like, how do you replace his production? I draft a couple. I draft more wide receivers, and you just have to hope that that have, you hit. I have Sam Laporta. I have Sam Laporta, who we threw the ball to 117 times last year and had nine touchdowns. Right. So if we get rid of uh, St. Brown, he's now going to get 230. Uh, targets. No, because and... to, I can I can take a Ricky Pearsall, or I can draft Troy Franklin, or any. The wide receiver is the most saturated position group in the entire NFL. There's going to be thirty or forty five wide receivers that I can take in the top hundred picks every year. So yes, but would, how many of them are going to be a top five receiver? Who cares? I don't need them to be a top five wide receiver. I need them to. Amon Ross St. Brown wasn't considered a top five wide receiver until this season. So like, let's get over the fact that it's like, Oh, we just like, we drafted this top five guy. You drafted a fourth round wide receiver. You plugged him into an offensive system that asked him to do exactly what he wanted with a quarterback that can't throw anything else other than what he's good at. And you force fed him the ball 125 times or whatever a season for three years. Great. He doesn't drop passes. He's not the only person on earth that can do those things. Uh, I, I, uh, I would not make that trade in a million years in I my, do. I personally wouldn't. So, I mean, like you can, you could keep, uh, I could keep, let's see, 8 million bucks. If I was going to pay a Mon Ross St. Brown 25 a year, which is mm-hmm. someone, some, what he's rumored to be, to get. 
I could keep Jonah Jackson, Jalen Reeves, Mabin, and um, who else is like four million a year? Like, who knows? Two or three other guys on the back end, and I get a top twenty pick. So let let's look to see who went in the top twenty in this class. How about a cornerback? How about a tackle? How about maybe a quarterback? You know, that's the other thing. Like, if I have a top 20 pick next year, you think I can move up two, I can move up 10 spots with whatever their pick is going to be next year's draft and my top 20 pick next year and get a, a replacement for Jared Goff. And then I have a I mean, to be honest, back. I think we might have his replacement on the roster already. Okay. It'll be curious to see how I'm, how I'm he sure does in the preseason. Yeah. yeah. 26 year old yeah. hooker. You never know. Yeah, no. So to answer your question, yeah, I would take a second and a first for a Monroe St. Brown and trade him on a rookie deal before I paid him 10 million bucks. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. And, and every guy that you just listed uh, that we I would rather have St. Brown than the combination of Reeves Maven, Jonah Jackson and you, the third you, four million dollar. We have literally I have heard you say in this show. Like, you could find a guy that's 85% of whatever player in round three. But apparently, you can't do that with Amon Ross St. Brown. He's the only player that you can't find 70 to 80, 75 to 80% of his value, like, two rounds later outside outside of the first round. And I said that about the position of guard, one of the lowest important positions in the game, not wide receiver, the second most important position on offense. Oh, more so than tackle. I, eh, I mean, I'd say they're about the same. I, it depends. I think because okay, we're gonna. Uh, are you a passing Penny team Sewell. or a running team? We're gonna pay Penny Sewell more than we're gonna pay him on Ross St. Brown. We so might, yeah, hundred percent gonna happen. Yeah, no, I think that's ridiculous and insane to think that like you can't find, you can't find somebody that can f- come up with eighty percent of a on Ross St. Brown. Happens all the time. Hey, where'd Puka Nakua go last year, Mike? Fifth Fourth round, round, right? How many Fifth passes round, yeah. did he catch? Quite a few. Interesting. Weird. He did great. Let's he let's sure take did. a look at the uh, let's take a look at the first round Where'd draft Cooper choices Cup? for on the wide receiver. See how yeah, they did. Cooper Where'd Cooper Cup get drafted? He was third. That's right. Yeah. Hey, interesting. I, but you can't do it if you get rid of the Monterey St. Brown. Just... Well, let's take a look at the first rounders. Sure. And see how disappointing basically all of them have been. Sure. I'm just saying, like, so it, like he's a pillar. Can you? Player. Yes, you absolutely can find those. Just like you could find a starting quality quarterback as the last player in the draft, sure, or a all-time great in the sixth round or whatever the hell Brady was, right? Like, it's not that you can't find them there; it's that your odds are not good doing that, right? Well, that's fine. Pay him twenty-five million dollars a year, and then have Ben Johnson leave and see if. Uh... When you when you're having forty five million dollar a year Jared Goff throwing to twenty five million dollar a year St. Brown with some new offensive coordinator, if it's the same thing, yeah. Well, and that's where I would I would go with the um, replace the Jared Goff way before I would replace uh, St. Brown. Okay, I'm sure Hendon Hooker will get him the ball 120 times a year. I, I don't see why he couldn't. Sure. It'll I mean, be interesting. They're just, they're just guys, right? I mean, he'll be open. So, I mean, any any quarterback could throw it to him. Well, I mean, if you can get open, that's that's the biggest piece of that, right? You don't have to be as good of a quarterback if you can get if you can get separation. Uh, that definitely helps the quarterback out. So that's why he's a pillar. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't find a lot of that See, kind I, of stuff. I going pay him twenty five million. Give him thirty. I mean, if he's as, I mean, like if he's up there with Justin Jefferson and those guys. You might as well make comparable money. I wouldn't be surprised if he is gets yeah. paid or close to thirty. Let's give him fifty million. I mean, how much is too much for a pillar? Right? Oh, now you're just getting cranky. Right, because just... like I just got roasted for like basically saying like the things that you and I talk about on this podcast all the time don't apply when it comes to a Monra St. Brown. You have nothing invested in that guy yet. He was a fourth round pick that you haven't given $10 million to. And like, we, you don't know who your offensive coordinator is going to be next year. You don't know if Jared Goff's on the team next year. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, he's just like, 
it's not just a certainty that he is going to be a 100 catch six touchdown wide receiver every year of his career. Could he be sure he sure yeah. could, but you're going to pay that guy. Like, let's say like, what did he make this last year? One and <laughs> one and a quarter million. You're going to pay that guy mm-hmm. 20 to times his... what you paid him. You made this exact point earlier. You're going to pay him 20 times what he, what you paid him last year or eight times what you're going to pay him this upcoming year to be the same. And you're saying that yes, I but... can get I can get a, a top 20 pick and a second round pick that I can use to address. Remember, Brad Holmes is making the picks here, right? He can make running backs and tight ends and safeties good picks. So why do I all of a sudden think that Brad Holmes, who found Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth, can't do that? again with more picks then i mean so i i think where where, to me where it comes down to is you have to have talent on the roster you can't just trade talent to get more picks to try to find talent you have to have talent because we might as well say the same thing what we should do is we should trade aiden hutchinson for a first and a 20 or a a, a, a 20th and a in a in a second and i wouldn't do that either I said earlier today, if somebody came to me and offered me two ones and a two for Aiden Hutchinson, I would probably have to take that deal. We're looking at the we're looking two at ones the, and a two. Yeah, that's the deal that so the, an extra one, right? The Rams offered for Brian Burns. Yeah, you said you'd have to think about it, which right. means you could consider it, right? But yeah. we're talking about a, a, a one and a two, which was this an was extra. the offer for St. Brown, right? But we were right. talking and, earlier that the, the the Carolina Panthers were idiots for not training Brian Burns for two ones and a two. And he is as good of a pass rusher, one of the best. He's one of the you know, top five pass rusher in the NFL. And he certainly got paid, paid like one. Right? And he just got traded for a two and a five. Right? So I'm not saying trade everybody, but we literally just said we can't pay everybody. Correct. Where are you going to make a decision? If somebody's going to help me make that decision easier and give me legit draft capital so I don't have to make that choice at a position group that I can find production in, that teams find production in all the time, LA Rams, number one example, I'm going to, I would have to sit down and say, we need to have a real decision, decision talk here. And like, yeah, when you get stupid, crazy offers, for like players, you sit down and talk about that because AJ Brown went for the 18th pick in the draft. Yeah, like he is a. Great I mean, if, if you were offering two firsts in a second for St. Brown, like like you uh, mentioned for Hutch, I mean, I think I think you probably do that. I'm not sure a, a one and a two is enough for me personally. It's not, it's not just a one; it's a top 20 pick. Which means the second round pick is in the top twenty as well. I mean, like, sure. I mean, is it the number twenty or is it the number one? Because those are two different areas in that top twenty. I think. I mean, I, I think that matters, right? But like, yeah. So, like, so I, I wouldn't said, take the twentieth pick. So, if I said I'm going to give you the tenth pick in the draft and a second round pick for Amon Ross St. Brown, so I would be getting the tenth pick and the forty second pick. Whatever. You're going to get the 10th. Well, right, because it's, it, theoretically, it's going to be the 10th and the 10th, right? No. Unless it's, it's one of those is a traded thing. So you, here's um, the pick in the 42nd pick. Here you go. You want to trade him? I'll pay him, right? I'll take him off your hands. I'll pay him. I'll give him the $25 million. You can have 10 and 42. You want to do it? That'd be really tough. What about I, 11 I'm, and 43? 12 and 44. Like we can go down until you find the absolute pick, you know, where it's like, this is my line in the sand. This is no longer worth it to me. Yeah. But like, that's just it is like, there is a, there is a spot where you will do that trade. So if, if I, I, yes, you're right. If there was a, if there was a spot, uh, maybe it's on, uh, maybe it's on draft day, you know, Dunze is there at nine and okay. the, the bears are like, I will trade you nine and whatever the hell their second one is mm-hmm. for St. Brown. I would probably do that and I would go and grab Odunze. Okay. So let's I say- wouldn't do that now if I didn't know that I could get that kind of guy. Like 
because there's a big drop off after those guys. And like there's a big drop off between Odunze, Malik Neighbors, and a guy like um, Brian Thomas, uh, Lad McConkey. And if I wasn't sure I was going to get Neighbors, Harrison, or Odunze, I don't I don't think I would do it. But if I was in that spot where it's the Falcons offering it to me, um, or um, I'm just looking at like the Chargers, right? If they're gonna try to take Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. and they're like, I'll, I'll I'd rather have uh, that'd be stupid. I'd take Marvin Har- Harrison Jr. over um, uh, Sun God. But like, if it was in this area, I would probably do it. Especially on draft day, knowing what's fallen and what hasn't. But if it is like, oh, it's going to be 15th and 47, I don't know I would. Like, we, we have to have production at wide receiver. Um, sure. would, would I then trade the second round pick and like a second and a sixth to try to, to get T. Higgins? All right, now 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 I'm starting to re- recreate that um, the, the production, you want, right? Pick. You can do yeah, you right. Can, you can do whatever you want. That's the point. So like Steve-O is, I think, has made my point for me better. Is that to be fair, St. Brown is more on the level of McConkey than he is Odunze and Neighbors, and that is the point. That is the point. Amon Ross St. Brown is a remarkably productive wide receiver. Yeah, but he's not the kind of wide receiver prospect that the guys that you named and are putting him in that range with, like, I think he deserved to make an all pro team. But if you had asked me at any point prior to this season, or even during the season, is Amon Ross St. Brown going to be an all pro? I would have said no. Oh, really? I would have said yes. Because it's just players like him don't get all pros very often because it's based on production. You usually see guys that are like Justin Jefferson production plus the shine or whatever. Right. And that narrative matters. And like, it's not like I don't have a guy that I can go to on the lions roster in Sam Laporta that does exactly the same kinds of things that Amon Ross St. Brown does and wouldn't expect the offense to be about the same level. I mean, like, Amon Ross St. Brown in this offense was really good the year before without Sam Laporta. I don't think there's any reason to expect, if I give Sam Laporta a little bit bigger workload and add in the guys that I'm going to take in the draft with draft god <laughs> Brad Holmes, that I, I wouldn't expect that, like, my team is going to be better. This year, maybe not. In the future, that's where I'm going. Is that like <clears throat> you said you'd be fine with the Lions winning a Super Bowl and getting one? And like, I mean, that's that is that is the thing that I want to see more than anything. At least a Super Bowl, right? Well, I'd love I'm, to see four, right? But if <laughs> if we don't get one, I'm going to be super disappointed. I don't think that we do need weapons, Doctor Detroit. I don't think that there's room in the offense for more weapons. So, like, they haven't re-signed Josh Reynolds. Why? Because they assume that maybe Jamison Robinson, Jamison Williams, is going to assume his workload. That makes sense. Okay. But, like, if the if the targets share is something like St. Brown, Laporta, Jamo, and you're going to hand the ball off however many times they did to those two running backs, where is the room in the offense for another weapon? Now, you might want another guy that, like, for matchup purposes, because that's how they've used JMO so far. Like, they've used JMO to be like, you're the deep threat. We'll never throw deep unless it's a broken coverage. But, like, they don't throw deep because Jared Goff can't throw deep. Right. So, like, no, what, I, is, what is the point of JMO on in this offense? Right. Like they want his, they want what he puts onto the field to, to give them better um, matchups against defenses. And so, like, if you wanted someone like Keon Coleman, great, but you're still throwing to JMO, you're throwing to Laporta 
and St. Brown 250 times a season. And those are the guys that are going to move you up and down the field. And Jared Goff is never not going to look at them. Yeah. So, I mean, like, Jamison Williams averaged three targets a game. If he gets up to five and catches all of them, that's 75 catches a year, 85 catches a year. Like, is that? I mean, what are they? And they're not going to be 85 bombs. Like, what right. kind of routes are he gonna, is he going to run? So, like, and you have, you can throw to the ball more out of the backfield to Jameer Gibbs or line him up at wide receiver. Remember, he is an offensive weapon. And we didn't throw the ball to him very often at all. No. Which I, was surprising. So like, if you want to add a key on Coleman, you can. What does he add? I think that he he adds jump balls in the end zone. You want to run a, you want to run a, what is it, a fade to the back corner? Like, Fades, he adds yep. the guy that you want to throw that to, right? You need touch. That's not the kind of ball that we throw. I don't know if you noticed, we threw almost no fades. Uh, <laughs> right. And when we got down inside the five, that is not the ball that he throws well. You think you think that if you think that Don, you think that if they traded St. Brown and didn't win it immediately, I'm assuming the Super Bowl, that they're gonna fire Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes. Be real. Be real, dude. These guys won the first playoff game in the Lions for 30 years. You might as well build statues out in front of the uh, the stadium for them right now. They're gonna get they're gonna get contract extensions. That's a ridiculous thing to say. No, so I think he's he might be um a little overzealous and pack your bags, but I think if we traded a guy like St. Brown and we did not immediately get the production back from those picks, maybe it's a maybe it's a dud, uh, whatever. I think there the the love and the support will drop dramatically. It'll happen quick. That's right? coming. Yeah, that's coming because it can't not happen. It ha- that has to happen. You are not going to re-sign all the players that everybody loves, continue right. drafting this well forever, and, and re-sign, and, and everybody's on the same team. You have to make choices as to who's going to be on the roster because you cannot, if they keep, if he keeps drafting at this rate, you cannot pay everybody. Right. So I mean, if he's drafting like, at this rate, you don't have to. No, but you don't I, have to be I, successful immediately. I think I think you do. The NFL is a what have you done for me lately league, and sports fans do not like to wait. Rebuilds well, are the bane of our existence. Lions, and Lions fans sure have a lot of uh, practice at it, so I think that they can yeah. probably readjust pretty pretty easy. And like, I don't think that if you don't have a Monra St. Brown, you go back to a six win team. You know, and I mean, like, and that assumes that you don't you don't get it immediately. What about Brad Holmes drafting has not been an immediately good thing? Jameson, Jameson Williams, Williams Broderick Martin, okay. Ali, uh, Ali McNeil, took him a couple years, Anwu Zarike. Uh, I mean, like, he's had right. some great hits, right? Should I name all the guys that he hit on? No, like, I was just saying, he had some great hits, but, like, what about him? Has he uh, disappointed with some? Well, many of them. On Wuzurike. On Wuzurike, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And they're not, and he's still so far ahead of the curve and has drafted so many players that everybody loves that, like, all of a sudden, that no longer seems to be something that can take place. So, like, yeah, you give Brad Holmes draft picks, and so far, every single year, he has found multiple dudes that yep. everybody loves. No, I, I I totally agree with that, but I also agree that like if he if he starts missing, and we talked about this on previous podcast, you're not going to have these kind of draft class every single year. It just doesn't happen. Like, either. right? So like if you make this trade and then follow that up with a dud draft class, he's going to lose a ton of that goodwill. And it does that mean pack your bags? He's gone in the year? No, but I think the the recency bias. When it comes to the following year, it's going to be like, he made this trade. We had a dud draft class. Um, we're not happy. Now we're now we're like questioning, is he going to do, do anything worthwhile? Is he going to be good or bad? If he has a second dud to mediocre uh, draft class, all bets are off when it comes to like how he's going to be perceived by the fans, 
uh, by Sheila, especially if, if we're not winning, if we take a step back because of the the production that we give up and then we don't re we don't see a return in. Like, I think there's a lot of risk to that as a general manager. I mean, I understand what you're saying and why you're saying it, but I think there's a ton of risk so as well when it comes much, to the team. How much do they have to not win in order for all this to like not make the playoffs? Me? So, you, so if they, if they don't make the playoffs, the sh the faith in Brad Holmes has, sh has been shaken. If if they don't, I mean, we're all talking like theoretical, right? So if they trade Amon Ross St. Brown and they don't make the playoffs, I absolutely think there's going to be a a shaken faith in in Brad Holmes and our team. And not only that, it's it also does locker room things too, because right, you're trading away key pieces of the team and replacing them with question marks, which is draft picks. So? If they don't hit, if they don't hit, well, I mean, so what does that, what does that tell you as somebody, why would you want to go, why, why would you want to go to a team and be successful if they're just going to ditch you when they have to pay you, they right? So there's going to, there's a, there's a, that kind of thing as well. Yeah, but they're going, I mean, it's not like they're not going to pay anybody. And like, right. so like, <laughs> you're, you go to the team that you get drafted by, they, they're going to pay you for a while. And then like, it's not like a Monroe St. Brown's not going to get paid. And that's oh, just no, it. He'll, yeah. Well, I mean, like the, everyone says stuff like that and then everyone gets their money and every, you know, most people get their playing time or whatever, and it's fine. And people talk about loyalty or whatever, and then they don't take a discount and people talk about like, Oh, you're such a hometown guy, hometown guy. And then you get traded. That's just cause it's a fucking business. Yeah, no, I, I get mean, that. Like, and like, if you're, if you're in the locker room and you're pouting, like, then you're not the kind of guy that they want in the locker room anyways. So, like, I mean, like, and what is the difference? I mean, they just let Jonah Jackson walk. Is the locker room going to riot? No, he wasn't a pillar to the – he was a he was an average at best guard. He wasn't a all-pro best player on your team kind of guy. He just walked into free agency and got 17 a year. I mean, like, he, the Rams certainly thought pretty well of him. The right. Rams had one of the worst offensive lines in the league, and they really, really, really needed to get better. So they were willing to overpay so to do that. They a lot of them, and they paid them a lot of money, right? And sure. Then, and then a ton of teams played paid a lot for guards. Yep. Right. So like, yeah, okay, he was the worst li lineman on the team. Ali McNeil, who walks. Who? Ali McNeil. You're gonna pay. A, you're gonna pay. So we saw a bunch of defensive tackles make twenty plus. I mean, Chris Jones got you know north of thirty. So are he was you also the highest graded defender in the entire said NFL. That, said that <laughs> was like a top five DT this last year. He was right. So if he's that again in a contract year, you don't think he's going to get Justin Matabuike money. You don't think he's going to get something like North of that, you know, like he probably will. there's 20 million. Sewell's going to be close to 30. Are you going to re-sign Goff? And then, Oh, by the Me, way, no, year, like, <laughs> You got Hutchinson up. He's, I mean, if he if he doesn't get hurt and keeps doing what he's been doing, hundred pressures and ten sacks, he's going to be right at the top of the edge market. I mean, like, so where yep. where's the where are you going to cut to save, man? Because you can't just cut the back end guys. You, you're going to have to let someone. You're, I mean, whether it's this year or next year or the year after or for however long you draft well. Yeah. Though, when those guys come up for their second contract, whether it's Laporta, whether it's Gibbs, Branch, you know, they're all going to, you can't keep everyone. That's why you draft well. But like why, when you draft well, that also means you can't keep everybody because there's just not enough spots. Right. Right. And that's the <clears> other, <throat> that's the other half of this that we're talking about. Is yeah. Like, so what I sacrifice a Monroe St. Brown for two draft picks and the cap relief and trying to you know hold on to McNeil or and a couple other guys. Yeah, because I don't want to be the New Orleans Saints. Well they they did their problem. Yeah. I mean they would their their issue came from extending everybody to where what are league we setting. About? Yeah. Uh, are well we they 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 were paying their running back 16 million bucks a year, right? So like those are the they did stupid things. Right, but like the stupid things that they did was to push their, the, they kicked the can down the road, right? They restructured yeah. to get under the cap 
and that forced more and more dead money into future years and that built up and built up and built up and then they were so far over that they have they start losing guys contributors you know often when you start having to cut like david montgomery or alex anzalone and it's like yeah and we're going to save six million bucks here and we're going to save six million dollars there and now we're under the cap and then it's like boy i really wish we had another guy to pair with gibbs or whatever and like wish I had a wide receiver a top, you know, a top 10, top five wide receiver. Yeah. And I would sacrifice a top five wide receiver for like three other players. Like when the Houston Texans traded back up to three net last year to take Will Anderson, Will Anderson was good for them. Yeah. He was great for them this year. Is he worth three guys? Probably not. But like, depends on if you can pick the kill doors, Will Harris's and the Jacobs's. All right. Sure. I mean, but like, that's just it is it's like, so you tell me you're, you're going to pass on that trade offer, a top 20 pick, say the 20th pick and whatever the second round pick is, who are you going to cut next year to save the money? Go ahead. Yeah, I, w- I would pass on it this year. Yeah, go ahead. You pass on it. So like, so who are you cutting next year to save the same money? I would probably deal with that next year. No. So I gave you an option and you ridiculed yeah. me for 30 minutes about it. So you tell me who you're going to cut so that you can save the other guys on the roster. Who's the Goff. guy that you love? Goff, easy. Sure. Okay. So then if the team with the replacement that you get doesn't work out and you miss the playoffs, you're going to own that. Because you I have to, that, right? Because I think that if you get rid of St. Brown, you don't miss the playoffs. In, but you're at that point, you're also paying Goff 45 to $50 million a year. Are you? So I you would rather pay, you'd rather, rather keep Goff, Goff than St. Brown? I would not rather re-sign God, but I don't want to. I don't also don't want to pay a Mount Rushing around twenty five million dollars a year. I trade Goff. I trade St. Brown and reload. Man, I, not not too many teams are NFC Championship quality teams, and then have to fire sale to reload. Well, let's that just doesn't this. happen. If I mean, like I don't like Jared Goff, right? Like I I don't think that he should be the quarterback. But if Jared Goff is not, if this team is constructed as normal and Hendon Hooker is the starting quarterback of the Detroit Lions. Say Goff pulls an Aaron Rodgers and is yep. out for the season four snaps in next year. You think this team makes the playoffs? Yes. That's ridiculous. Be, so, And the reason why I do is because we have a top two run game, a top three offensive line, sure. a great um, wide receiver and just wide receiver room. We've got a head coach that's a candidate for head coach of the year and an offensive coordinator that's one of the best OCs in the game. Sure. I absolutely. I think any mediocre, t- any mediocre quarterback could have done what Goff did last year. I think Gardner Minshew wins twelve games for us, and eh, maybe eleven. Maybe he, maybe he loses one. And Hendon Hooker Goff and Gardner Minshew. I don't know yet, but like, yeah. I, is he a probably a mediocre quarterback? I'll, probably he's probably at least a mediocre. If you put Mac Jones on the Detroit Lions, is he going to get us to the playoffs? I think last year. I think he was. I think he does. Okay. I I mean, what did Goff do special last year? The only thing that Jared Goff does that is special that I have had other people he, that tell me what he does is he processes quickly, which I don't agree with. I, yeah, I, I very much disagree with that. Yeah, but like, and he, I think he does nothing special. I, I I agree that he does nothing special. And like, so what is it that Hendon Hooker can't do that Goff can? So the thing that, so the thing that Jared Goff does that I don't know that Hendon Hooker can do is play the quarterback position. For as much as I dislike Jared Goff, he was a top ten quarterback last year, and like is a starter in the NFL. That's it. He. Those are the nice things that I have to say about Jared Goff. I don't know that Hendon Hooker can do those things. And if you want him to hand the ball off 500 times a year, cool. You're not going to make the playoffs doing that. Yeah. No one has. So yeah, I will say, Dr. D, I do disagree with that. He doesn't distribute the ball very well. It goes to either Amon Ross St. Brown or it goes to Laporta. And that's basically it. And his accuracy is also not good. He throws it behind, forward. Like It's almost rarely on stride. And it's almost rarely a spiral. Is it in the vicinity of a as a of a catchable ball by a wide receiver? Yes. Um, 
Oh, so that's like, who's open? Sure, but like those other guys are open as well, but it is they're the second options and he doesn't get that far down the reads. So I, I just I don't know. I just disagree. I don't think he's particularly accurate. Um he throws it in a spot where it can be caught, but it's not usually in a good spot. Right? Okay, now you're just Oh good God. But yeah, like, now that's just it. Like they went out and they were like, Hey, Jared Goff, what are you good at? Oh, you're good at throwing the ball between five and 15 yards in the center of the field. Okay. To wide open receivers. Hendon Hooker did not, he never, never did that in college. He yeah. throws to the outs, to the hash, from the hash to the sideline. Right. So I mean, because that like, was what their offense was. That's yeah. what their offense was. Right. And he was, which doesn't mean he can't do the other things. It just means he was not asked to do the other things. Correct. So we have yeah. no idea. It's a projection. Correct. And so, like, as far as I am concerned, if you can find a dude that can get open in the fourth round, like you do with an Amon Ross St. Brown, you can find a There are other guys in the NFL who can get open and have a quarterback, a Gardner Minshew, throw them the ball. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking the picks and the cap relief. Yeah, I, I think – if it was after this season, I would consider it. I really think that our best chance to win a Super Bowl is the upcoming season because yeah, that's, that's when we have Ben Johnson, right? Like, I think that is – That's the other I thing. think that's our best shot. I, I want to win a Super Bowl, and I think the goal should be to win a Super Bowl every year. Yeah. But, like, this podcast I listened to this last week made me think because – what if Brad Holmes wants to take the Lions in a direction where you're like the Packers or the Ravens or the Steelers? Always good, but never wins. But they, right? So like heading into the playoffs last year, you your statement was, if you're in the playoffs, you've got a chance. Right? You got a chance. Yep. Like, if the Detroit Lions over the next 20 years win one Super Bowl but make the playoffs 18 of those 20 years or win one Super Bowl and make the playoffs twice, what would you rather have? Well, I mean, obviously. I, so the real question, because the obviously answer is the most amount of times of playoffs plus Super Bowls. But the question is, would you rather have one Super Bowl and two playoff victories or zero Super Bowls and 15 straight playoffs? Because I know the answer for me, and it's not 15 straight playoffs. Sure. I think that I think that one of those things gets a lot of people to show up to the stadium and buy season tickets and parking and beers and merchandise. And the other one is it was nice once. And so, like, whether or not I personally would say go for the Super Bowl, go all in, go get Chris Jones. Or if Dr. Detroit says, give me a Super Bowl, or you want a Super Bowl, you know, or whatever, you know, if it's like we can have the teams in the past where people showed up to the stadium with bags on their heads, or the stadium can be full every week for 15 years. I think that the organization that is the Detroit Lions is going to pick, we want the people sitting in the stands for those 15 years. And if you sure. give us a chance to win a Super Bowl, We'll take the chance, you know. I mean, if those are your only two options, I would take that as well. I would. I don't want bags over heads. Uh, so if the only option is terrible team, bags over the heads, or consistent mediocrity, I will take consistent mediocrity because those so, are the options. So we have seen Brad Holmes not go all in for three years yep, or make a trade at the NFL trade deadline. Right. Or make, I mean, the craziest move that he's made in the draft was moving up 20 spots for JMO. So, like, what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's the kind of guy that's going to push all of his chips in the middle all of a sudden? I don't think so. Right. So where do you think that leaves them? Which trajectory do you think that sounds like more? I think that they're expecting a five-year they had a five-year plan, and they are in going into year four yes. of a five-year plan. I also did not like the Broderick Martin trade, Dr. Detroit. You and I are in agreement there. It was a terrible trade-up for a player that didn't play at all. 
But like, <clears throat> I think that Brad Holmes is trying to set up the Detroit Lions as a team that is going to be play meaningful games in December. Yeah, for no, I I agree. A long time, and then if he is the GM of that team playing meaningful games in December <laughs> for a long time, that's his job. You know, no, I so like, I totally I agree with that, one hundred percent. And like. The Packers have won a Super Bowl in that time frame. The Ravens have won two Super Bowls in that time frame. You know, the problem that the rest of the NFL is trying to solve is that no one has Patrick Mahomes. What do you want to do? You're not going to beat Patrick except, Mahomes. Except for them, Mahomes. except for Chiefs, you right? You couldn't beat Brock Purdy with Patrick, with uh, Jared Goff. So, I mean, like, but you got there and everybody was thrilled. And now it's not good enough. Right? As a Red Wings fan, <clears throat> who experienced the first Stanley Cup victory in 42 years in 1997. Winning a championship changes everything. Sure. Now, granted, the Red Wings then went on. They didn't have a salary cap at the time. Um, but they went on to, to make 25 straight playoffs, have three more championships. Now, they went to the final six times in 13 years. Um the last time being in 2009, but they kept making the playoffs for several more years after that. Um, but you do start getting used to winning, right? It, it feels good. Uh, but getting that first one was amazing. Um, I would definitely, you had a super sweet B for 22 years. Nice. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's why I would say I would rather have one Super Bowl and a handful of playoffs for 10 years than 10 straight years of no Super Bowls plus playoffs. So you're going to win a Super Bowl and you're going to be like, oh, cool, I'm good for five years. I mean, I, I would want to keep winning. Sure. But if it doesn't happen, because on average, like all things being equal, a team will win the Super Bowl every 32 years, right? Just if it was just all things being equal and everybody takes their turn it's going to be 32 years between Super Bowls, 16 years between uh, Super Bowl appearances. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would want us to win the Super Bowl next year. And then if we keep doing well, awesome. Like, that's what you obviously want. But if not, I would take the Super Bowl next year and then the next 10 years of not winning the Super Bowl, uh, whether it's we didn't make the playoffs at all or... Um, we made the playoffs and just didn't didn't get there. I, Super Bowl cures all ills, essentially. Yeah, it does. And this team has had a lot of ills and like a nice sustained period of winning. I think does a lot for Detroit fans, and they're not rebuilding. You know this. I think he's talking about the Red Wings. Oh, the Red Wings, sure. Yeah, but aren't the Red Wings fighting for a playoff spot this year? We are. Uh, well. <laughs> We uh, we were the trade deadline pass, and then I think I don't know what the last game was, but we we lost like we went oh four and one in our next five or whatever. So it uh, <clears throat> I don't know how close we are anymore. Uh, I know we're on the bubble. Oh yeah, if you're not winning, you're rebuilding. Essentially, they were, they were winning the year they they won nine games last year. That's winning, right? Who? Oh the Tigers. the previous year? Yeah. Nine. If you have more wins than losses, you're winning, right? I mean, what's the well, it depends on what you try. Super Bowls? The Super Bowl, winning the, the Super Bowl. The only team in the NFL that's winning, if that's the definition, are the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> well, so lately, like, there's the Chiefs last two years, and then the teams the Chiefs beat the Chiefs beat to win Super Bowls. I did see something funny the other day. Um, uh, remember Dr. Eric Eager, one of our first yeah. guests? Yeah. So yeah. he was responding to a tweet on X, and um, they said, we barely beat Green Bay this year. Well, we split with Green Bay, right? They um, humiliated yeah. us at home on Thanksgiving, which was embarrassing. And so someone was like, what happens if the Chiefs don't go out and sign like a big-name free agent wide receiver? And he, he, goes, he goes, I guess they just win the Super Bowl ugly again. <laughs> you know? Do I think the Lions got better between the nine win season and the twelve win season? I do. Is that what you meant? 
Yeah, I, I think so. I also think they got better between week 18 or the um, conference championship. Oh, Green Bay. Green Bay. You barely beat Green Bay last year. Do you think they got better? I think Green Bay has gotten better. The I think Green Bay's problem is they went from MVP Hall of Fame quarterback to MVP Hall of Fame quarterback to Jordan Love. And if Jordan Love is the guy that over the last six games of the last season, then I think that he's probably like a legit long-term starter from there. But I think that they've improved their overall roster. Is that what you mean? Because I think Green Bay, I mean, like, I don't think that Green Bay is a team that the Lions can overlook. Remember, the, the Lions were also down, were down to the Bears in both games this year and had to come back to beat them once. We did not beat Chicago easy. Yeah. We did lose, we, we did almost lose twice. Where are you going with this? Because I do think that the roster is better, but like every other team in the NFL also tries to get better every year. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So this will uh, better. A, a, a parting thought here, Drew, sure. and this will make you happy. Oh, good. Former Michigan offensive lineman agreed to $107 million in contracts ahead of the start of free agency. No, that's. Oh, you Mike Onwenu uh, was a former Michigan offensive lineman, was $57 he? million. John Runyon, $30 million, And Graham oh. Glasgow, $20 million. You know, um, I did see that tweet. And uh, Daniel Jeremiah, who is the lead, one of the lead scouts over at NFL.com, said, um, I don't think the Bears got better in free agency this year much. Swift and Baird. But he said that uh, when he talks to NFL offensive line coaches, the feedback that he's gotten is that Michigan offensive linemen are a year or years ahead in development from other programs. That seems like a lot. But like Michigan could have, and they're not going to go high, but Michigan could have its whole offensive line drafted in the, in the draft this year. That's crazy, isn't it? You know, and so, and they've got another another NFL quality offensive line that they're going to line up this coming uh, fall, you know, and so like some of that money I think is weird. Like John running got 10 a year for three. I thought that was high, but like, I think the NFL is starting to show us they're willing to pay for interior protection because teams are rushing up the middle D tackles. Yeah. Pass rushing D tackles, blitzing the a gap, you know, people need pass protecting guards and centers. Like you just have to have it across the entire line now. Right. And so teams are willing to pay for the guys that can do that because they got to have them. So I think that, I think that, I mean, the only team in the NFC North that I think is worse today than they were at the end of the season is the Vikings. And that's because they have to answer the quarterback problem. Right. Yep. And, you know, they signed, they signed Sam Darnold, you know, you got to have somebody. He's a beating heart back there. He's a beating heart back there, you know? And so like, if I had to guess before the draft, who the, how the NFC North falls next year, I would say Detroit, Green Bay, Chicago, Minnesota. But yeah, who knows? You know, that's why it's fun. But like, I also think that the Lions can win 13 games next season. I think so. I think, uh, well, I, I'd have to take a look at the uh, the schedule. Um, but I think we, I think, I think uh, 12 wins again, I think is our floor. Like, I think we can, I Ooh. think we should be able to hit that. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say 11. 11 is the floor. Were, they were pretty fortunate with things like head, like coin flips and the injury injuries weren't crazy last year. Like they were pretty lightly. And Kadarius, Tony gifted us the first game. Oh my God. <laughs> the first one of the season. <laughs> you know, thank God we don't have to, I, mean, I hope wherever, wherever he lands, we get to play him again, but like yeah, twice, yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. he can go to green Bay. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the Amon Ross St. Brown, 
trade proposal clearly derailed the podcast today. Yeah. So the trade that trade is not on the table. I like him on yeah. St. Brown. I do think yeah. he's a huge contributor to the Lions, and I think they're going to resign him for twenty five a year. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a hundred million dollars four year contract. Yeah. So, but I know you got to go, Mike. So we're going to yeah. go today. It's about that time. Um, just uh, as always, uh, Tuesday, 7 p.m., uh, like, comment, subscribe. We are up to 100 subscribers. So thank you for everybody that subscribed. Uh, keep telling your friends. I'd like to keep uh, keep growing. It, and we're getting more people in the chat. So that's awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to... So next weekend or next Tuesday, we're looking at probably more free agency um talk the the kind of the wrap up ish of that by then anybody good is going to be picked uh picked over um so we'll talk about the kind of the the wrap up of the the biggest part of free agency and we'll do a couple more end of year evals uh we'll probably look at golf and compare him to the rest of the quarterbacks in the league and probably uh compared to his year last year i think would be an interesting uh see his growth there and then uh, maybe maybe Hutch in our defensive our, our edge rushers, so uh, we'll we'll take a, a quick uh, look at that. Uh, anything else for the good of the the show and the the folks in chat? Yeah, you and I are not done talking about this, by the way. So look forward <laughs> to that. But out for them, they should just go and have a restful night because <clears throat> we're going to be shouting at each other for a while. So <laughs> I'll talk to you later, buddy. Sounds good, man.